Can a monster be humanity's ally? A question that has already been explored in Attack on Titan, Claymore, Parasite and Tokyo Ghoul, just to name a few. And now again in Kaiju number 8. Is the story a good entry in that category? Well, I will try my best to convince you in this review of Kaiju number 8. And as usual, I will keep the spoiler free. The story is set in modern day Japan with one key difference. There is a lot of kaiju that appear seemingly out of nowhere. And when they do, those monsters shake the cities like an earthquake. And they have one more thing in common with earthquakes. There is usually one powerful base monster, and once that one is killed off, smaller, weaker afterbeasts follow. To deal with the threat of those kaiju, the defense force has been established. And the main character, Kafka Hibino, wants to become a troop member really bad. But while his childhood friend Mina already made it to commander, he couldn't even pass the entrance exam yet. So at the age of 31, he works with the cleanup crew, who take care of the mess once the monsters have been defeated. But then, on a faithful day, he and a co-worker are attacked by an afterbeast and sent to the hospital. There, a tiny kaiju enters Kafka's body and suddenly he can transform into a kaiju himself. At first he can control the transformation, of course, and is discovered. That's when he was given the name Kaiju Number 8. But thankfully, no one drew the connection between Kafka Hibino and Kaiju Number 8 then. Even though he has to keep his identity hidden, especially from the Defense Force, he again tries to pass the test to fulfill his dream of becoming a troop member and fighting by Mina's side. Will he make it? And what will happen if his secret identity as Kaiju Number 8 is revealed? And why did that tiny kaiju even enter his body in the first place? Kaiju Number 8 always keeps the reader hooked with such questions. And usually, once we get the answer to one of those, a new one arises at the same time. The world building feels very grounded. I think it portrays pretty accurately how a nation would deal with such a kaiju problem. And I think it's great that the author addressed the question of what happens to the huge monster carcasses after the epic fight. And that our main character starts out with this underrated but really important job. I really like the enhancement suits for the Defense Force members. These suits have incorporated monster parts and there are limits as to how much they can be used. Not everyone can release an equal amount of power with those suits. Even those who can use close to 100% can only use it for a limited time period before their suits start to overheat. So even for those guys, fighting a powerful kaiju comes with high stakes. And the suits are not the only thing that's been enhanced with monster parts. The same thought was given to weapons and medical equipment that uses monster recovery powers. That is precisely what humans would do. We make tools out of everything, even a kaiju carcass. Oh no, scratch that, especially a kaiju carcass. The pacing is really good. There is always some level of suspense that keeps you hooked, but also quiet and lighthearted moments, so it won't put a strain on the reader. And I love the grown-up protagonist. I feel like the majority of this kind of stories has teenage protagonists. So this was actually a nice change, and the author made good use of the more mature protagonist. His body may not be what it once was in his teens and 20s. I'm inching closer to my 30s, I can relate. But Kafka makes up for that with experience. Especially since he has a background in cleaning up the remains of the monsters. So he literally knows them from the inside out. Kafka is not the only great character though. The side characters are very likable and interesting. Though I feel like we've seen nothing yet, since it's only 34 chapters long at the time I'm making this video. But I think they all have great potential. Well, the obvious one is that the story is nothing groundbreakingly new. It is a bit of a mix of Attack on Titan and My Hero Academia, but with its own spin on it. However, up to this point it has been rather predictable. Still, there are some elements that are really intriguing and have the potential to bring something new to the table. But even if this won't happen, Kaiju Number 8 is a fun ride. So the predictability may keep it from becoming a masterpiece, but it's still worth your time. To me the only other weakness was the comedy. Don't get me wrong, Kaiju Number 8 is really funny and I love its comedy, but sometimes it just doesn't fit the current tone. Pretty often when there is a tense or dramatic scene, the atmosphere was killed by a misplaced joke. So overall, great comedy, but not always used at the right moment or just overall a bit too much. As I said before, the plot is rather predictable, but still intriguing. There is a lot of open questions and I'm very curious how they will be answered in future chapters. As for now, I'll give the plot a 3.5 out of 5. But I think it's now at a turning point where it could at least catch up to a 4 out of 5. I really like pretty much all the characters. With 34 chapters, we can't expect too much character backstories and development. 
which is why judging them is really hard at this point. So far, I feel like more than a 3.5 out of 5 would be too much, since most are still lacking some depth. But this could change very soon, since the world building and overall story have been established now. The world building is solid so far, especially when it comes to technical advancements and the way Hydra attacks are handled, but still it's not very unique. So I think a score of 3 out of 5 sounds fair. Especially when it comes to the monsters and fight scenes, the drawings are great. Sometimes the backgrounds are lacking a bit of depth, but overall the art is very pleasing. And I love the little extra chapters with colored illustrations. So the art gets a 4 out of 5 from me. Due to its predictability, Kaiju number 8 hasn't blown me away. But after finishing each chapter, I wanted more. And that would not happen if I didn't enjoy reading it. I really love following these characters and the story still has open questions I want answers to. So it gets a 4 out of 5 for overall enjoyment. Okay, but why should you start reading Kaiju number 8 now? Because it's a lot of fun to read and with 34 chapters it's still a reasonable commitment. I know that a lot of people love One Piece. I still haven't picked it up though, because then I won't be able to read anything else for a long time if I ever want to catch up. So yeah, this is why I wanted to get this recommendation out now and because I think Kaiju number 8 has a lot of potential. But I'm a huge sucker for this trope. I love protagonists that in one way or another stand between two sides of a conflict. And if one side consists of what humans would deem as monsters, all the better. Many of my all-time favorite fantasy or sci-fi anime feature that trope. Like Claymore for example. In case you know of other examples, please let me know in the comments, I'm always looking for stories with this trope. If you want to be notified once I make a review of one of those, why not subscribe to the channel? I'd love to meet you in future videos. And of course, thank you for watching this one. Anyway, farewell.